The federal government has hinted that it may consider to charging patients earlier than their required treatment and isolation period at the different centers, even though they are still positive. This is in light of the reality that the country's isolation and treatment centers have become overwhelmed by the number of persons requiring institutional isolation and treatment. It also said it has begun testing people for COVID-19 only once as against its earlier stance on second testing before discharge. This is also done to decongest isolation centers. The Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, who made this known on Thursday during the daily briefing of the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19. And Dr. Flora Nwagwagbo, public health practitioner, joins me in the studio. Thank you, John Skype. I beg your pardon. Thank you, Dr. Flora, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. And how are you doing this afternoon? Very well, thank you. How would you react to this alarm raised by the chairman of the presidential tax force on COVID-19 that chloroquine has been abused? Well, he is saying what is currently happening in the country. Um, chloroquine is being abused. A lot of people are taking chloroquine as prophylaxis against um, COVID-19. Um, some are taking prophyl um um, chloroquine for treatment of, of presumed COVID-19 that they think they may have, which isn't right, which is like self-medicating. And that's very dangerous because, because chloroquine as a drug has quite a lot of side effects. Besides, um, in Nigeria, where we are uh, basically a malaria endemic environment, chloroquine has, um, there's a very high resistance to chloroquine right now, at least malaria resistance. So we are, sim we, we appear to be creating a problem. So yes, he is right. And there is cause to be alarmed and to be worried and to contain it if possible or stop it. Known as an anti-malaria drug. Now, what is the correlation with COVID-19 as some COVID-19 survivors have attested to the use of chloroquine? So, um, chloroquine, the way we know it, um, has some effects. So, it helps. It helps in mediating what they call and um, providing um, mediating an anti-inflammatory response to this exaggerated inflammatory response that happens with COVID-19 disease. And so you find that chloroquine um, and maybe hydro hydroxychloroquine have been found to be somewhat effective in mediating this um, effect. It also helps, or at least they say it's, um, it helps to disrupt the early phases of replication of um, the virus in the early phases of the disease. However, um, the, the, the if efficacy in this respect has not yet been confirmed. So it, it is worrisome when we use it hoping to, yes, mediate some of the inflammatory response, but then in the process, we create other problems. Because before you do this, you need to also be weary of the fact that some people may have some pre-existing condition that could also put them at the, um, at the dangerous end of the, heart, uh, of the side effects of chloroquine, for instance, maybe increasing the heart rate. So you have people probably having other problems as a result of that. So yes, chloroquine has been found, um, though not 100% not, not proven, has been found to be effective to some extent. But to what extent is what we yet do not know. So it is not exactly a cure for COVID-19. It, it, it simply helps in some sense. All right, if you will, Dr. Flora, in an enumerated form, if you will, help us with the side effects and the abuse of, the abuse of chloroquine. Aside the regular itching we, we've all come to know chloroquine for, what could be the side effects of the abuse of chloroquine? So a major one is that um, chloroquine tends to increase the heart rate. So you tend to you find people coming down with um, arrhythmias, having fast breath, um, heart, heart, heart rates, which can predispose them to, to cardiac problems. Chloroquine also has been found to cause kidney problems, um, as well as even some nerve cell damage and some psychiatric um, problems as well. So it's not just the itching. The itching really is, 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 is there in its mild form, but it's not the main concern, quite frankly. 
it's what it can it what what it can do and besides chloroquine also when it interacts with other drugs such as even azithromycin can increase the heart rate further um, you know such that a person becomes compromised so you you have that interaction which can also create more problems for people who take chloroquine without being um, supervised now in the light of this do you consider it safe and necessary to explore the herbal option in search of a vaccine for covid-19 Definitely. Um, the exploration of, of any, any option right now is a good one. However, there is a process that these things must follow, right? It's not, it's not, it's not enough to just say, oh, yes, this can work. I mean, we're not, we don't work with native intelligence here. There must be a science backing whatever, um, whatever um, remedy you had. It could be a herbal, um, herbal drug, it could be something orthodox, but there is a process that they must follow such that you can test it, prove it, and considering that you're going to use it on human beings, you must ensure that there's a high level of rigor put into finding out potential dangers, which you will never really see until you've tried it on a large number of people. You could try it on a few people, and yes, um, everybody seems safe, some small number. But by the time you try it on a larger number of people, that's when you can really tell how safe this medication, whether it's herbal or not, is. Dr. Flora Nwagabo, it's been a pleasure having you join us on the news, and thank you for your time. Thank you.